All right, everybody, welcome to community today. Oh, this guest, y'all. <laughs> I <laughs> We have a very special guest, I'm gonna say that. I'm your host, Kenny Jones. Uh, can you please introduce yourself for the people? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, John Felipe Miranda. I'm a Chicano designer. Uh, I work in the entertainment industry for three years now. Uh, I've been uh, designing movie posters and packaging. Uh, with uh, a company, an agency called uh, BLT Communications. Uh, I'm now freelancing and um, just kind of exploring new uh, new uh, ways of uh, what to do, like in my field now. Uh, now that COVID sort of uh, changed the direction of my uh, my career, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's essentially me. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> I think that's super cool. Like immediately we how we met, y'all. We met in a chat room on Twitch with the legend Veach. <laughs> and uh I don't know, it was just good vibes and good energy when we were, we were yeah. talking to each other on Twitch. So I was like, hey, like let's let's just talk more. Let's get to know each other even more and be like intentional yeah. with the conversation. Um so with that, where are you from? I'm from uh Mona, California. Mm-hmm. So it's like the lo- like the like at the bottom of LA County. Yeah. So it's sort of like it's sort of like in this weird place where it's like at the border of like San Bernardino, like IE. Yeah. yeah. And LA. So it's just like oftentimes like LA like is always like oh no you're not actually LA like. Right, you know? right. That debate. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's like this weird connection, but I, like my family's from uh, Los Angeles. They're from like East LA. And so um, it's like this weird like connection to like LA, but then also like like since I grew up in Pomona, I was closer to like the IE. I have like a connection with the IE as well. It's like it's so weird, but uh, I love both areas. So I kind of uh, I, I feel like I'm connected like to like just the general area of like Southern California right here. Right, right. Enjoying the the SoCal yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I really do. you think you could see yourself moving anywhere else um that's tough i don't know uh like what i like about it like down here is like i just feel like a lot of like uh there's a lot of history like with my family here right like as like uh like as a mexican american like like my parent like my parents as immigrants like started their life in la right and so that's uh yeah yeah so like a lot a lot of it feels like interconnected with me to like just want to prosper here so like even when i leave like la like i start to miss it like yeah like i, I want to come back to it um but i feel like if i could live anywhere else it could possibly be like new york maybe oh new york maybe yeah but uh it's a tough one for me i, I feel like i would have to experience it like more because uh-huh. I feel like my my time in New York is like was so short. Like I've never yeah. like stayed in New York for a long period of time. Right. So I don't How know long was your stay? Like two weeks. Yeah, that's still short. Yeah. 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 So I, I kind of want to like test the waters. Like maybe like stay there for like three months or something. Yeah. And like see if I get like sick of it or like you know like whatever. Uh, I don't think I could move to the Bay Area. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> and it's not that it's not that I hate it or anything. It's just yeah. uh, I don't know. It's just uh, my time there. It, like it feels like it, to me when I move to like when I go to the Bay, it feels more like uh, like a time to like just sort of like be with friends and like yeah. uh, or even just like for work. It's fun for work. But uh, I don't know if I could live there. That's just yeah. it. Like yeah, the Bay Area is definitely different. It, just yeah different people up here <laughs> but we're, we're a lot of fun we're a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> no, no yeah it's nothing like with the city or anything it's, i don't hate it or anything it's just uh 
I just my experience with it is just like it's more of like a like I don't want to like taint it. That makes sense. Like yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to live there and then like hate it. But then like I think of a uh, that movie, uh, La- uh, Last Black Man in San Francisco. Uh huh. Yeah. Like uh, like there's like a scene where it's like this like white girl in the bus and she's just like I hate San Francisco and he's just like <laughs> he's like look he's like you can't hate something until you love it. Yeah. So like I don't know like I I thought that's like a really good saying like about like cities. Absolutely. Jeez, well that's super cool. For since we talked about like kind of where you grew up and your family, what got you into like creating? Um, like did you draw like, or paint? It's kind of complicated. Um, I didn't start to draw. So like I always drew like in my notebooks and stuff, but like right, it was just you know I feel like every person kind of does that, like doodles in their notebook. Uh-huh. Um, but I wasn't taught how to draw or any tra- I wasn't like taught traditionally until I got into college wow so I took one art class no no two art classes in high school uh-huh. um, I took a drawing class but it wasn't like it wasn't like a real drawing class it was like oh like you know go on the internet find images that you like and then like print them out and trace them like Oh yeah, yeah, paper, yeah. You know? I used to do that with the little uh, Dragon Ball Z flip pages. The oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so yeah, so like to me, it didn't really teach me anything. I actually really hated art. Like, wow. Like really on in like my high school years, like I just thought, like, why am I in this class? You know, like I don't want to do this. You know, but yeah. at the same time, my attitude towards school is very like, like I don't care. So right. like, but eventually that changed. Uh, towards like the later years of my of high school, uh, my girlfriend at the time was like really into art, and uh, so I started like exploring like with uh, different mediums. I started to like paint, but, like I was really bad at it, uh, like terrible. And then uh, from there, I took a ceramics class. I took a Ooh. ceramics class my senior year, yeah. and uh, the teacher was really nice. He was very supportive, and. Uh, he, I feel like he kind of opened the door for me. Wow. Like, cause at that point, like I was really loving ceramics. I was sort of like, oh, you know, like a lot of liberties here. Right. And yeah. uh, so I was going to go to, I got accepted uh, to go to school. I decided to go to Cal Poly Pomona, which was just like the local university. And uh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. We're not going to say it's just the local university. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's not like just local uh, like you get me like, but like for for art, for art, it's not like you know top, you know like it's not like up there. At least the time when I like when I was uh, like the time I got accepted uh, to Cal Poly, right, it wasn't right. what it is now. Right, like, right. Now it's like it's it's a great school to go to study graphic design. Like if you're a young graphic designer right now and you're planning on going to school, yes, go to Cal Poly. But my during my time, <laughs> Cal Poly was like. They had just gotten rid of their, uh, they had just gotten rid of the fine art department. Oh no, they yeah. They cut it. They yeah. cut its throat. It was gone. Uh, all there was for the art department was graphic design mm-hmm. and uh, art history. It was just those two. Sheesh. Yeah, so it was very close. It was. It had like really no budget Like when I went into Cal Poly. Yeah, that seems like they, those were about to get cut too then. Yeah, it was the case. It was very cut dry my first two years. It was very like, like, oh, is this even for me? Because, well, that's the thing also. So like, uh, so that my high school ceramics teacher, he um, he basically told me like, hey, like, uh, if you do decide, because I wasn't sure what I was gonna study. Right. Um, I wasn't even sure if I even wanted to go to school. Like my kind of my plan was kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna work at the restaurant with my dad. My dad worked at a restaurant. And uh, so I was just like, oh, like maybe uh, like I don't need to go to school. I could just work at a restaurant with my dad. But then like my dad was uh, like very point like poignant on like me going to school. So like I was just, like, okay, like of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, like uh, I'll just go, you know. Um, and so I went in as an art history major because mm-hmm. uh, I thought, oh, like you know, I don't have a portfolio. I didn't right. take any art classes in high school. Like I have nothing to show. Mm-hmm. 
So I just thought, oh, you know, art history, you know, that's at least art related. I'll just do that. And so uh, during my first quarter at Cal Poly, um, I hated it. <laughs> I hated art history. Like it was the least fun shit ever. Like I was having so much fun in my other classes. Like, like I, I just had like an awakening. Like my first year was like an awakening for me. Uh, like I was so. taking like history classes that were teaching me about like women's rights and like chicano history and yeah. like it was like the first time like my uh a, like a teacher a professor like uh acknowledged my last name as like it's uh, with its accent as right. miranda rather than miranda because yes. everyone says my name like miranda and uh so it was like a good feeling I, like it was like the first time I felt silly. and uh wow that's uh, dope yeah yeah it, i feel like that's like a good thing to have when you go into school that's like an important aspect to have. um but yeah uh i hated art history i hated it i absolutely hated it and uh i remember going to a counselor and i was just like look like i need it i need to get out of here you know like this isn't for me yeah like, I, i'm not having fun like at all and uh she was just like oh like you don't have any credits or anything <laughs> like you know that's the worst you've only part been here for a cre- you've only been here for for a quarter like it's gonna take a while for you to get accepted like you're gonna be kind of like stuck in like undeclared for a while mm-hmm. until so i was just like fuck and then um i took a drawing class uh as a, it was like a requirement for art history majors they need to take one drawing class and so that was like my first like actual like traditional uh drawing class that i took and uh from there like um my art professor like loved my work she was like oh like you draw so well like etc cetera, etc cetera. and i was just like oh like you know i had a lot of fun you know i love the class i guess and i like she- it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, uh, and then like she was just like oh like you should uh you should switch to graphic design she was like fine art like you know there's graphic design like you should try it out and i had no idea what graphic design was i had no idea what the career choices were like like what exactly you do like is it like do i get a paint do i get to do all this stuff like i didn't know what it was right so i just knew i hated art history (laughs) i knew i hated art history and i was just like okay i was like i'll just give it a chance and if i don't like it then I'll transfer to a school that does have fine art, you know? Right, right. And um, so uh, I switched and they accepted me immediately because like I said, the department at that time was so small and uh, just didn't have a lot of funding to it mm-hmm. that uh, they accepted me right away. So I just started taking design classes and I hated them. <laughs> I hated them because at that point I had already taken four fine art classes mm, I took transition. like yeah I took like three drawing classes and a, and a painting class mm-hmm. and so I was already kind of like oh like I want to be a fine artist you know yeah Not, like I don't want to be a designer I want to be a fine artist right and so I was going into like my design classes like you know kind of like oh no like I want to do this for me like yeah. I'm not try- I'm not trying to sell something like I want to make this for me wow yeah so that was my mentality so there's a a a, a lot of struggle for me to like understand what design was and like why what like what it was and how how can i connect to it you know Mm -hmm. so uh it took me a while um and then uh my mom passed away my freshman year of college and then that. that yeah um that sort of like shifted my perspective while in school. So like, uh, I was like gonna drop out and stuff, but I had my painting professor, she like kind of like took me in and uh, she was just like, oh, like, you know, like, I just want you to like, she would bring me into her studio, like during my breaks and she'd just be like, paint, you know, like just keep going. And so like, I had this mentality during that time, like during that summer that my, that my mom passed away, I was just kind of like, you know, I'm just gonna focus on like, making art yeah. and so like i just kind of like did that for the whole summer with her and then uh when i when uh when the fall quarter started 
uh, I was just like, oh, you know what? Like, I think I have like some ideas for like how to like intertwine like my like my fine art brain and and my design brain. Like, yeah, I could do design. Like, I was able to do design, but it was just like my professors were just kind of like, look, like what you're doing is cool, but like it's just not design. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it was just like I had to find a way to like mesh them. Right, and so right. like I spent the summer like experimenting like I was just like all right like we're gonna figure this out and so it ended up working out for me because I ended up having like a style that did blend them and that's like why I really uh, stayed with the design program is because I felt like oh like I finally have like a voice in design now like it's yeah. it's not just like oh I hate this and I'm just drawing shapes and you know doing text all the time like now like i'm finally going into something deeper right how long how much experimentation do you think you did because i know a lot of people always think that these things come like like an instant you know yeah um it was a lot of experimentation it was a lot during that time but it was also just learning you know like mm-hmm. like sometimes school with school you need to kind of like take the time to like do the extra steps Right. At least that's how it was for me, especially because like my art department just wasn't the best at the, at the time. So um, like I just took those extra steps to kind of like learn the program. So like during that summer, uh, I made sure to learn the programs before I took those classes. So like I I purchased uh, the Adobe programs and I was like, oh, like I'm going to learn Photoshop. I'm going to learn Illustrator. Like right. at least get the basics down before I start the class. And so I was doing that. And then um, I had a really close friend of mine in college and him and I would uh, just draw every day, Damn, every so day. Cool. Like we just had notebooks and we would draw every day, even in our, uh, in our lecture classes. Like yeah. we would uh, like during the lecture or whatever, like we bring out our notebooks and then we just draw like people in our class, like kind of yeah. like, oh, like let's draw them, let's draw them. And that's, so that's super cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, he 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 has so much notebook. I, I might have like a few of them somewhere, but uh, but yeah, he it was just like it was just so much fun. Like him and I just like just kept going at it. And so like that also helped us to just sort of uh, create ideas, like be able to continue creating ideas. And um, so yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I I've been picking that stayed with me all throughout college and even now. Like I always, always keep a notebook like right next to me. Always. Wow. Yeah. Um, for someone wanting to get into graphic design now, do you think it's still necessary to go to school? Because I know YouTube University is destroying the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's not a necessity. It's not like all right. So like for instance, my creative director at BLT, uh, he didn't go to school for for design. Wow. He uh he went to, he was a lawyer in Mexico. Wow. Yeah, he was a lawyer in Mexico, but he he had a a notebook. He had a notebook full of just designs. And he his uncle like worked at a at a desi- at the design firm in the states. And so he basically sent his notebook to his uncle to show the agency and they loved his stuff and so like they, you know, brought him over got him a visa he worked with the company like that's basically launched his whole career you know? that's crazy and, they're like sir please come here right now <laughs> <laughs> please and uh but yeah but like that's the thing though like you know if your work is good uh you could make a career out of it Absolutely. and that, that's that's sort of like a uh a good thing to be able to have you know like if you're someone who's not privileged enough to get an education like if you're just able to like you know get paper or whatever uh tools that you possibly can get to create designs or art uh you know it's you could do it you know right there's still avenues yeah yeah and so i mean right now it's still like unfair that you have to pay to get adobe um I, i mean figure out as long as you get the laptop figure out how to crack it and hey go for it hey (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, that. I'm, not, that. I'm not saying that you can contact me but <laughs> yeah but yeah like, yeah uh, it's just like uh 
at some point there will I, I mean I hope there will be some like free source of it Absolutely. because if you do that we'll have so much more uh, design I mean there's already a lot of designers now but I feel like uh, from my experience at school most of the designers were like white kids yeah <laughs> they're white kids so it was just like i like for me it was like oh like uh i need i need to see like my influences you know like like all of that's why um the aiga uh, uh club at our school mm-hmm. i was always like buddy heads with them because it was always like uh it would always just be like the same kind of people coming in to talk mm-hmm. and i was just like look like you know we're like the black designers we're the Mexican, Puerto Rican, you know, etc. Asian, like I know these people Mexican. exist. I know these exactly, people right? exist. Where? And so that's why it was just like, like, what's going on? Like, even in like our history class, our history class, they never taught me who Emory Douglas was, right. who was designing for the Black Panthers. But like, they were teaching me about every other white guy designing stuff. They taught me about, you know. <laughs> What's his name? The salt bath, whatever guy. With the uh, scroll, with the scroll <laughs> of names. <laughs> but it was just like, you know, there's a history, and it's just that like, it hasn't been taught to us, and no, and there's been no teachers really that like want to like go the extra step in like teaching uh, students right now. But it's like, and it also has to do with funding too, because right, like, right. and that's the thing that sucks too is that it has to be like a like a elected class it can't just be like a mandatory art history class it has to be like oh like take this elected class on uh black history for designers or whatever you know like it's right. never like a mandatory it's always hey here's an elected option here's an right. option you can take and that's just the problem with it like i didn't learn about latin uh art history until they opened up like right and it was and at the same time there's a problem with that too because then my sorry my dog you're kidding uh then the problem with that is that i'm being taught about uh latin latin american history by a white woman from white people (laughs) so it's just like it's like there's like there's still like so much progress we need to make absolutely and i think your work is speaking to that we're gonna get into that definitely more (laughs) before that like are you a movie aficionado or uh yeah have you I'm always kinda... loved movies when did it start? yeah 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 um i've been watching movies for for a while uh it started i think it probably it was sometime like maybe i was like in sixth grade or so yeah. i just remember like uh, my uncle like uh he uh, uh he like moved his stuff into our garage and he left like his big like movie collection Oh, it was like over. Our <laughs> and so I remember it was like the summer and um, it was like me and uh, my siblings like we just started grabbing them like just like oh we're gonna watch these and these and these I just remember that whole summer it felt like an endless movie night like it just yeah. felt like all we did was just like stay in our room and like just watch movies and so like I just watched a variety of movies to the point like I just fell in love with them like like at that point it was like we always went to the movies like to watch anything like my siblings and i and so uh from there on i feel like that's when i became like a like a movie nerd like like well not necessarily i feel like at that point i was like like i love movies Uh i feel like i didn't become like a movie nerd until like maybe sometime in high school when i started to like kind of getting more into like reading essays about like movies and stuff right but, that understanding uh, is like more developed yeah 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 do but uh it's always, it's always been there do i have a favorite genre yeah i love sci-fi Ooh, like there's okay. something about sci-fi that uh, has always sort of like intrigued me i feel like now it's kind of losing interest in me a little bit uh-huh. i feel like now i'm starting to kind of like these like very like almost hyper realistic movies like like uncut gems uh so like martin scorsese's films like these very like they feel like almost like slice of life like you're almost like following someone's life like you know like this you're there sense. 
yeah this makes sense from what you just we will we talked about before this transition uh-huh. of because <laughs> i mean like you you wanted to see people like you so then you know like yeah, sci-fi, yeah, yeah. you can re-envision yeah. that you can reimagine what that looks like yeah yeah and exactly. now you're like wait now now i can do it now we can do it. yeah no. yeah 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 that's a there's a forgetting her name but there's this great uh sci-fi writer uh she's a black writer and uh she uh she talked about like why there should be like more sci-fi like black sci-fi writers because like the possibilities to rewrite or you know uh just sort of say and express things and like the, that genre is just endless yeah i think so, it's octavia butler yes 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 yes, yes. i'm yes. reading one of her books right now really really yeah how do you like it I love really it. Good. Yeah, She's yeah. Really good. Yeah. Um, I read uh, Kindred, and then I'm Kindred. reading. Kindred, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm reading uh, Plays Arc right now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was introduced by her by uh, my sister. So my sister would always talk about her. Yeah. And then she was like, "Oh, you should read, read her stuff." Like. She's like, she is like radical as hell. And I was just like, all right, I got to see it. <laughs> Let's see it. Right. <laughs> um, so that love for movies, when you, when you, you talked about this moment of like the intertwining where you're like, oh, like I have my graphic design and the uh, fine arts piece. Now I can, yeah. I can be a graphic designer. Were movies in the equation then? Is that when it was like, oh, now I do? Or was that like when you got no, the job no. after school? Yeah, the movie thing kind of came later. Uh, it came pretty much. It pretty much came when, uh, like, I finished school pretty much, or it was like my the end of my school years. Right. And it came from a very close friend of mine. Uh, he also works in the entertainment industry. His name. He's a designer. Uh, he's a Filipino designer. His name is uh, uh, Brett Arrows, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he uh, he got an internship at a uh, Fox, uh, at Fox 20th Century Fox, uh, and I just remember it was, I think it was for the summer, and I just uh-huh. remember he came back and he was kind of telling me all about it, showing me all the stuff that he did during his internship. Right. And I got like really excited, you know, like I was just like, oh my god, like that's so cool, you know, like you got to work on all these things. Yeah. And that's what kind of like made me want to like. That's what kind of sparked me, like, oh, like, maybe I want to go this route, you know? Right. The only problem was, like, in college, I wasn't known for, like, my Photoshop skills. Mm-hmm. Like, I was very pushed on my illustration, because, mm-hmm. like, I painted, I did all, I, I, I drew well, so I sort of, like, was almost going towards, like, an illustration route. Like, right. my portfolio was, like, very, I don't think I showed you any of my schoolwork. <clears throat> but like maybe you could have seen them some on like my Instagram post. But like I did like the book festival wow. and uh, for LA Times. It's not like for the actual LA Times, but like as a right. mock up, I I did that. And uh, but, like those illustrations, like when I put them into like uh, uh, shows, like they would always like you know do well. Right. And uh, so I was going an illustration route, and so that was like. That was an issue because like in the industry you need to know photoshop you're you're not really doing a whole lot of illustration you're doing more like working with photography and uh editing them and you know basically it's more of working with photography than than you are drawing like drawing is very small part of it right i feel like well i mean of course i have no (laughs) (laughs) but i feel like drawing could be like a good structure but it seems yeah. like they're like collages you know like collages of the thoughts yeah yeah, whatever yeah. The, the movie yeah. is or the that yeah. entity you put it together in many ways it depends there's different forms of uh, movie posters right so like you have your teaser poster and usually those ones are very uh they don't tell you too much like my personal preference are teaser posters because it's very like uh, it's kind of like it's more like an art piece you know it's like yeah you know what what is what is it telling you like you know maybe for like for candy man it's just the hook with a little bit of honey on it you know like yeah uh you know it could just be a, like you there's just more um amb- amb- ambiguity to it like it, it, it could be anything you know whereas uh you, you have your um 
what, what we would call them is the floating heads where it's basically you get all the movie stars you know you just kind of like smash them together maybe you put like a like an action scene at the bottom or something you know it's just like a, power rangers kind of like power rangers yeah like yeah, you know yeah. the, that's the very old traditional way now it's a little bit different now but like the old way was like you know you have all the heads on the very top uh-huh. and then like you just have like a big <laughs> like image or whatever underneath and then like the title you know yeah but uh, it's changing crazy. now yeah it's changing now to where it's like it's not like big floating heads but it's like it's like big poses you get me so like the marvel movies you know like you have like every single hero on the poster right. like in a pose but like they're all just sort of like stacked like yeah. on top of each other you know and so it's a lot of that uh, that we're seeing right now in the industry yeah it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes too yeah yeah i mean there's still interesting stuff uh yeah i think the most interesting one that i've really seen lately uh was uh the john wick 3 poster oh yeah yeah because it's uh i'm gonna pull it up after this i'm not sure if it's uh i'm not sure if it's uh uh, the teaser or not but it's like the the poster is reflected <clears throat> so like you're you're looking at him through like a door i think and so and it's raining too yeah. so like the title of the movie they reflected it and i've wow. never seen i've never seen anyone do that yeah i gotta check I, it out after like this. It, it threw me off so much when i seen it because i just thought oh like what client what client said yes to this because this is interesting like this is cool yeah Yeah. they took that Uh, step out into the beyond yeah Yeah. Yeah. um how did you feel when you got your first major publication uh do you remember the day like it was yesterday like being like in a like in a like what do you mean by publication like do you mean like in a magazine or like uh or like being on a billboard or I mean, I, 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 I have no words. <laughs> Whatever well, was like okay. the grandest, grandest point for you. Well, okay, grandest point. So far, uh, so far, there's a lot of time. I worked on a billboard. I this wasn't the grandest, but this was my first. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the first, like feeling like, oh, like this is dope. You know, yeah, like yeah. I, this is sick. Yeah. And my first one of my first projects was working for the packaging for uh for a quiet place uh-huh oh and uh i worked on a billboard ad for them and i got to see it it was like just down the street from our agency in hollywood it was just down the street big billboard and i just remember i went to go get lunch and like they told me hey like you know go get lunch at this place you know they kind of guided me to it yeah. And then, like, I just remember I was going and I got my lunch and I just walk out and I just see it and I was just like, holy fuck. That's, that's, <laughs> <good."> like, <laughs> that's super sick. Yeah. That's super and sick. And then, um, I think the next one, it might have probably been, uh, like, my big one that was, like, really exciting was probably, uh, Spider Man. Yeah, Far yeah, from yeah. Home. yeah, that one was like very. It was just a lot of fun to work on. It was like one of the bigger titles that I worked on. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood is very like that project is very dear to me. Yeah, uh, just because it was one, it was illustration, uh, design. Uh, it was in the seventies, which I love. You know, working on things that are like seventies style. Uh-huh. Um, so that one was fun but spider-man uh i worked on that whole campaign you know wow. i like pretty much that whole campaign i was in pretty much almost every team aspect of it um so like that one was just fun because it's just like from billboards to posters to the packaging right like i got to work on all that stuff and see it like out in the world yeah and that movie yeah. was just so big that I don't know it felt like oh like you know everyone gets to see this and there's a lot of like you know a lot of people were like it was like a lot of good things that people were saying about like the art and the marketing of it whereas like some projects that i worked on you know some people are like oh this sucks <laughs> like That's i could do better yeah. than this you know yeah and it's like 
it's like I don't know. It's it's a it's very uh, it's hard to like uh, to ignore them because it's just like you want to be like, hey, look, man, I I did <laughs> so many concepts, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. like this is just the one that got chosen, you know, like this is like I had so much better ideas, but uh, it, it's just like at the end of the day, it's not my choice, you know, as to what gets you know what gets out there. Right. Do you still have those concepts for the other, like, any projects? I, I do, but, like, I can't, like, show them. Like, it's, yeah, they're yeah. technically not my property and all that stuff. So that all is, like, protected. Like, I, have, I have, like, my, I have them, like, because they sent them to me. But, like, right, that, right. like, stays, like, that's, like, the property of, of the agency. Right. But that's super cool that you can even look back on that and see. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought of this, 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 and this. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you never know, like, if they ever, like, I don't know, like, steal book for a move for, like, a movie, for the movie, like, in, like, 20 plus years later, like, they could always go back to those concepts, possibly, you know? Yeah. So it's just, like, like it's, not, it's not necessarily, like, the end, the end of it. I mean, technically, they can't call me up because it's their work, you know? Right, like, right. I did the work for them, but, uh... It'd be so cool to see it, just be like, you know, me, like, knowing that I did that. Be like, hey, like, I did that, like, 10 years earlier. Yeah. You know, but, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, con- concepting is, uh, one of, the, like, the more exciting parts. Right. For the industry. To, for me, though. Because uh-huh. it's more like, uh, you're working with illustrators and, uh, you're coming up with ideas, getting scratched from the internet, and just, you know, like, oh, like, can this work, can this work, and, uh, it almost feels like you're, you're staying up late at night, like, uh, like in college, you know, like, yeah, working yeah. on the late, late night project, like, with, like, your college friends, like, everyone's kind of, like, like, drinking too much coffee, everyone's <laughs> tired, but, like, you're still grinding, you know, like, because you need to, like, get that A, you know, right, and so, uh, that's sort of uh like the exciting part of like when like you're pitching and like conceptualizing so that way because it's very competitive like it's very competitive because like so much agencies are competing for to get like that specific uh client right that so, makes sense uh, yeah so it's just uh you need to make sure you have like your a game on like all the time yeah. and even though you don't have like a lot of time you just gotta do what you gotta do what do you think someone that's trying to get into this or like maybe a student or i mean anybody can do it but what what do you think they should do as like their first steps um it's mainly photoshop so you wanna you wanna get good at photoshop Mm -hmm. because when they look at your work they're trying to see um how well you work with imagery right they want to know like they want to know how good your composition is like you know how how do you frame your work you know right. is this is the way you're framing your work is that like very compelling uh, they look at like the concepts that you come up with in your portfolio uh you know does anything like really stand out like what what brings you uh what makes you different than like other people you know right. so uh but photoshop is the number one you want to learn how to edit photos <clears throat> learn how to clean them up be able to collage and make photo realistic imagery you know bringing in elements and working with lighting and shadows and you yeah, know those theories those art theories yeah yeah pretty much it, it all comes down so photoshop is basically drawing but with uh photos you know right yeah it, it, that's exactly what it is you're drawing but with photos you know when when you want to put you know let's say like this bottle with like my phone like you know like when you put these into photoshop like you need to start adjusting things you know you need to match the lighting and etc etc you know like can we get that project but like that's what it is it's uh it's just being able to have that capability, but you also have to be quick. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to have like a really good art director who wasn't like too crazy. Like, you know, he was very like, you know, like I want you to succeed. And I think a lot of that had to come down to the fact that, you know, we were both Mexican. 
and um, we're from like the our he's from the same area that like my family's from in Mexico That's and so I think he just really wanted me to succeed but he was like that with everyone it wasn't just me but he uh, he really wanted uh, wanted to help me like you know just get better you know right. so, like right. when I did when I did do like when I did like fuck up I suppose you could say like uh, he was very like he wouldn't like yell at me like there would be some art directors who would like just scream at their Jeez. their junior designers you know but like he was very he was not like that he was very like you know calm and like you know he was serious though in his tone like you know he would tell right. me like hey like you know you got to get your shit together you know like yeah constructive like, yeah yeah exactly not like oh i'm gonna yell at you until you cry and then now go do it it's more like hey like i'm gonna give you some notes you know like yeah like like basically he's just being wise with me you know and uh so that was a really good thing to have like a like an art director who was not like hot-headed and not like a huge ego or anything like that like he was just very leveled and like understanding right right yeah so that was a that was a really good thing to have and uh yeah he he just became like a very uh, big inspiration for me and uh, he was like an uncle i would literally call him my deal yeah like yeah. spanish for uh, uncle and uh yeah him and i got very close during our time there wow that's beautiful because I, I think those connections are really what what help people get through all those moments um just like yeah, the, right. the professor that helped you and that was a painting with you yeah yeah day. yeah we really need yeah. those people in our lives for real exactly yeah yeah and uh she was a, a vietnamese painter uh from long beach wow and uh yeah she took she took real good care of me like you know she brought me in like like a like a son you know yeah. and uh i love that lady yeah shout out to her shout out to both yeah. of them <laughs> and and fong her name is Anne fong yeah. shout out to Anne fong we appreciate you <laughs> Um, so we're gonna shift it up back to that uh, yeah. familial state though, Pink Punk mm-hmm. magazine. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Can you please yeah, like yeah. explain it for everybody so that they can better understand like what yeah. it all means and where it comes from for you? So uh, Pink Punk, uh, it's always sort of been a thing for me in college. Um, so when I in college, I really loved well. Pink has always been my favorite color, but it was my mom's favorite color, though. Mm. Like, it, it came from my mom. Yeah. So, like, uh, uh, my mom would always wear pink. She was very, like, in, like very bubblegum, pinkish. And, like, uh, it was just her favorite color, like, lipstick, everything. And so, when I got into college and I was, like, you know, exploring and stuff, uh, I just thought, I remember looking at, uh, I can't remember if it was, like, the Sex Pistols album. It was some punk band that I was listening to. I, I can't recall which album it is exactly, but I think it was Sex Pistols. And I just remember thinking, oh, like this pink. Oh no, you know what? I think it's The Clash. The Clash. I think it's actually The Clash, yeah. And uh, I just remember thinking, oh, like this pink is really cool, you know? Yeah. Like why don't why don't we see more pink and uh, in like, you know, like punk? Like why, why is pink not like more prevalent? Like, cause I, I thought the color was just so cool. Uh-huh. And uh, that's when I just started saying like, oh, you know, what? I can mix this into like things that like, like, cause the thing about graphic design when they teach you stuff is like, oh, like these are the genders for each color, you know, like right, this, right. you know, color provoke. Like if you're gonna design something for uh, babies, you know, you're gonna make one for a boy and a girl or whatever, you know, very, very, you know, gender like orientating things when they teach you about color, but like there's so much more to color than you know gender you know gender gender is like the last thing you should worry about unless like you know you really are trying to sell something to that specific demographic but right right. what i wanted was like uh i remember uh being assigned a project to design a um a skateboard like festival wow and i just remember thinking oh like i'm gonna make this shit pink like all of it like the whole campaign is gonna just be like pink with like maybe some shades of like dark red like i'm just gonna make this like like look cool but like 
bring in a different color than like what people would typically think of like with skateboarding you know absolutely and so and it wasn't like oh this is like a girl's competition or this is a guy's competition like like no this was just a skating competition yeah. gender neutral like and it was just bringing in that color you know like that um, made it stand out so like when my peers saw it they were like oh like this is sick like yeah this is dope. You're, <laughs> like you're bringing in this color it looks great you know it, it feels real right and so that's that's sort of uh when i started to think like oh you know what like like pink is my color you know like i know how to i know how to like kind of play with it you know it doesn't have to be like this girly thing it doesn't have to be like this uh you know what people have said pink is because it's just not like pink is pink can just have its own thing it's it just depends on how you use it you know but, like of course there are uh, color psychology and stuff like that but that could change you know uh-huh. that could that could change over time depending on the usage of it you know continual like, usage it, yeah, yeah yeah so uh that's when like i was like pink is my color and so i started using it for like a bunch of uh, my classes like my class projects it just like all my peers just knew me as like oh like this guy he's gonna use pink he's yeah. gonna use pink. and i always almost try to like throw in a, like some pink somewhere like uh-huh. even if i wasn't um but uh but yeah so I, that's that's like the origins of why pink is like so uh connected to me like uh it to me it i am pink like my skin tone like everything like i have shades of pink you know right and so um that's uh when it started and then i started a comic book and it was called the the pink balloon mm-hmm. and uh the pink balloon was like about uh sort of uh my experience like with my mom passing away talking about grief and sadness and depression and um from there i was sort of uh just exploring like uh, my illustration and color and uh that's when i came up with like the phrase pink punk mm-hmm. and so <clears throat> with pink punk uh years later when uh when I was uh, working at BLT, uh, and during my time at BLT, I loved it there, but I kind of wanted to make like my own marquee, you know, like, right. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do something that was like, like people knew, like I made that, you get me? Like That's working on movie posters, uh-huh. like it's great and stuff, but like, like over time, nobody's really going to know that I made that stuff. Like, unless you knew me personally, like. Uh, you won't know that I was behind that stuff because the way agencies work now, it's like you're kind of hidden within the yeah. agency's name, you know? Like, it's not the way it was, like, during, like, the 60s and 70s where, like, you knew who that designer was. Like, uh, like they were just prevalent, you know, getting awards. Right. There was more competition, better pay, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, so, like, I wanted to make my marking, you know? I wanted... You know, when people talk about a certain designer, you know, whether it's Emery Douglas and like, you know, the Black Panthers, yeah. uh, like I wanted like, like my thing, you know, like when people are like, oh, John Felipe Miranda, like it's that, like, you know, it's pink punk. And so uh, that's why I started it. But it also started because um, I wanted to work with, uh, with other artists of like my choice like artists that i felt like needed more recognition and uh just uh, a, a platform to work on you know um i i, I was having a uh, sorry. It's okay. uh, so yeah i was having a talk uh, with uh with my creative director and uh he was telling me sort of like his backstory and uh i just remember thinking like like oh like you're a mexican immigrant designer uh-huh. and you've been working on movie posters for 30 plus years and i didn't know you my whole life you know yeah like he designed for video games movies that i adored you know that, right. that i loved you know and i didn't know who he was and I didn't want that to happen, you know. I I I wanted to stop that. Like I was just like, no, 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 all right, all right. I'm gonna create a magazine where P 
people like my art director get the recognition because to me you know he is a high asset designer you know right right and Absolutely. his colleagues they get called to for interviews you know they get you know they people want to know things about them but he, for all his years the only the most you could find from about him on the internet is like his awards like some of the awards he won for uh, his packaging right which is great you know at least there's something but like this guy deserves to have his story out there you know to for young designers to know that you know this is a possibility there's a career that could like you know get up there you know like even like you know my own dad for instance like uh-huh. he didn't know that like that I could make this a career, you know, like Absolutely. throughout like uh, my years in college, he would always tell me like, oh, like, what can, what can you do with, you know, graphic design, you know, like, what do you, like when you're done with school, like, what are you going to do, you know? And I'm like, dude, I don't even know, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, right, right. Um, but uh, that's the thing is like, within like uh, poor communities, like lower income communities, it's like, you know, a lot of us either grew up during the Arnold Schwarzenegger era or like, you know, art art and other, you know, creative outlets were like defunded. Right. Like we didn't we didn't have like a lot of art classes. Um and it was just no education, like no there there was nobody to tell me like, hey, like even just being a fine artist, like nobody said like, hey, like you could be a fine artist and make a career out of that and like etc cetera, etc cetera. like i think for us it was like that was like frowned upon it was like oh no like that's a privilege which it is it is a privilege absolutely but it's also like you know it's a chance you know especially for lower income people <clears throat> it's a chance right you're, you're taking a risk you know especially like for someone like me who was from a low income family uh child of immigrants like that's that's you taking a chance you know this career could either benefit us you know you and your family or you know you're stuck you know maybe working in a minimum wage job or doing something else you know like that's why it's a chance but the way i view it as is like i every like person of color low income like I only want to lift them up, you know? Because it's just like, to me, you're inspiring, you know? Every white kid who's got the money, like, dude, honestly, like, you're gonna be fine, whatever. Like, your dad's gonna get you, like, some internship and you're whatever, you know? But right. it's those kids that I'm talking about, like, that need, like, to just be lifted up because they could do it, you know? They could do it. It's just they need they need to be pushed you know to get there they they need need to be taught yeah yeah and they need to see it they need to be they need to be taught also like you know they need to be told like hey like this is the history this is these are the people who are doing it now you know uh and when if you don't do that you just have no idea you know i had no idea there were any mexican or black creative directors out there right you would never know you would never know never knew because the only directors that were coming in for for uh talks to our university were white directors right so it was just like so when i when i had that conversation with him i just i remember telling him like oh like if i had known who you were i feel like i probably would have started earlier you know like i I probably would have been more motivated absolutely Um, so it's just to me like that's that's a very important thing. And so that's what I wanted Pink Punk to be. I wanted it to be the representation that was gonna show show people like me, who grew up like me, that, you know, this is what you could do. These are the things you can make. These are the careers you could have. These are the people who are doing it, you know? Look what they're doing. Look how far they've gone, you know? These weren't like, Goosebumps. These weren't Goosebumps. like <laughs> these weren't privileged people. Like you know, they were. These are people who took a chance. You know, uh, oh, it's man. almost very similar to like a immigrant story. You know, like Absolutely. you know, they took a chance. They they took that chance, and you know, they got to where 
you know, where they want it to be. And uh, that's what I wanted the magazine to be. It's like a, a place for that, you know, and yes. a place that will take chances and explore things and not just be something to to sell you something. I don't want to I don't want to make something that is just constantly all about like, hey, uh, you're going to make something and you have to solve this or whatever, you know, like I want you to make something and it's like it's something that it's your voice, you know, what do Absolutely. you want to speak out on? So that's why I started um, the card series for the designers. So I was picking out designers and I would ask them like, hey, like what's the stance that you want to make? You know, here's a three by six card, you know, wh what do you want to speak out on? You know, there's some people who want to speak out on depression. There's some people who want to speak out on uh, Black Lives Matter, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like, to me, that's the design that I wanted to uh, bring a voice to, you know, and the people who I wanted to lift up. Like, I didn't want to, I'm kind of done with like commercial art in a way. Like, yeah, commercial art, it's going to, it's going to pay you. It's right. going to pay you. But uh, for me, it doesn't like, it doesn't do anything for like my soul like like when like working on movies like yeah i think it's fun i think it's so much fun and i want to keep doing it but at the same time like i know i can't do it for too long like i need to do something that feels like deeper like connected to like my beliefs on life and like you know like it, it just has to be more because uh i can only do movies for so long and then like i just know like i need to get out of it you know yeah, so that's what the that's what ping punk is for me. It's just it's creating uh, an opportunity for others and a voice and stories that you know I didn't have when I was in college or when I was in high school. You know, figuring out like what I wanted to do. Absolutely, we're gonna link that uh, to this video so y'all can check that out. Um, it's beautiful. I checked it out <laughs> in advance. <laughs> Yeah, the the first issue is actually uh, photographs that my mom collected uh -huh. uh, in these journals uh, that she kept. And so what I did was I the whole issue is about sort of like her inventory and how in a way, uh, even though my, my mom didn't consider herself an artist or anything, uh, she kept these photographs and these, um, uh, these drawings from like during her time as a teenager and these notes and uh, photography that she took, but also photography that other people took that she just kept and like she stored. It was like a memory bank, you know? Wow. And uh, for me, that was something that, uh, that I held very close to me because it, it was able, uh, when my mom passed away, it was almost like a, like a love letter, you know? Right. Kind of like, hey, like, like this is my past you know like you know read through me you know look you know she wasn't just my mom you know she Absolutely. was uh you know she was her own person she had her own her own you know she dated she you know had fun she had her own adventures and stuff you know and Absolutely. so to be that's what the first issue was it was just sort of uh giving you a deep dive of what what it was like to be a chicano um immigrant in East LA at that time from like the 70s, 60s, sort of like see how it was like the family life of that era and uh, just how it looked, you know, then like what, you know, cause we, in many ways, like we don't really have that. Uh, and uh, in like Mexican culture, we don't really have the, um, the American, especially in film, but like in art, it's a little bit more open, but in film, we don't really see uh, the Mexican American experience, you know, that's always like overshadowed with like stories about uh, either, you know, gang life or cartels or, you know, yeah. you never, you never really see a story about the Mexican American experience. It's always like uh, overshadowed by, you know, corruption or other aspects, or it's like stories about Mexico, which is, you know, great. Like I love Roma, right. but it's like, like me as a Mexican American, like I, that's not me though. You get me? Like it's like, that's a, that's Mexico. That's yeah. not, that's not me. Yeah. So yeah, it's like we need like 
more stories about like our experience and this is the same thing with the asian community as well like and you know with the black community it's getting there we're starting to see more movies but yeah. like it's definitely been a long time that it took to get to this point you get me and i think eventually we'll get there like we're kind of getting it with some netflix shows you know like yeah. selena and stuff like that but it's just like there needs to be more of like these singularity stories about the mexican american experience because it's just like uh we just don't have it it's almost like it's lost like throughout our years and it's so strange to me that for how long we uh like cinema has been around like nobody has written a story about or or i wouldn't say no one's ever written it it's just right. no one's ever uh produced a movie that was about like uh a latin couple like falling in love in like la or whatever like it, it's just like just do it already you know like <laughs> I'm excited for what you're gonna do in the future, guys. <laughs> don't don't let them get a hold of you. <laughs> that, that whatever project that's coming next for you is gonna be beautiful. I Thanks, can't wait. Thanks. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the people? Thank you so much. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I, if we're gonna end it here, I just want to say like, if you're a young designer or just someone who wants to get into design, like, just do it. And I'm rooting for you. Other people are rooting for you. Like, you will find your support system. Like, the art community will be open arms to you, you know? Like, at least that's how I am. Even, like, just even Beach, our homie Beach, like, yes. just even in his community on his Discord, like, it's very open. Like, everyone's, like very supportive of each other like almost immediately and i literally have not met any of them <laughs> in person <laughs> and even online they're very like already like hey like love your stuff hope you're doing the best possible you know like and that's the thing is like it's having that that uh community you know that uh really makes things better that's why i think school is great uh-huh um as a designer i think that's why it's a benefit because you get to be you bet you get to create a community of people who are like-minded like you you know even Absolutely. though there were a lot of white kids like uh there were a lot of uh chicano kids as well there were black students even though there was less of in certain groups it was still like hey like these are people who are making things and have certain backgrounds that are similar to mine so right you'll find your you'll find your people you know You'll, you'll find the people who you could relate with and uh it's just lifting each other up that's all it is and, and that's uh, what we love <laughs> We're doing on community y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah man so it's just uh i'm rooting i'm rooting for you guys that's it like i'm always rooting for you guys and uh i i just want to see more people making stuff i want to i want to i want that to happen you know i want to make art accessible and be able to show it off in like the best way possible Absolutely. you know i like i've been designing um for big clients smaller clients and uh i'm at the point now where to me like that stuff doesn't even matter i want to see like i want to see the everyday man i want to see what his thoughts are i want to see what you know their thoughts are like what do what's going on in their minds like i don't care what's going on with celebrities or anything like that that's why for me movies are kind of like the side of my mind now like yeah like i'll do it like if i have to if i really need to get paid and stuff but like you know i want to delve into other people's art now like i want to create that space for them and uh yeah i'm hoping by the end of this year or next year like i finally launch it and it's like really like where it needs to be um but uh i think it'll get there you know it's Absolutely. just i'm, I'm kind of doing it like at my at my own pace because you know it's working on something on your own it's like <laughs> you got so much you want but like at the same time it's like only one person can do so much and uh, I, have, I have people helping me um there's a designer named uh, paul flores mm -hmm. um his IG is like P 
TLRS. I, I could let you know if you want to yeah, add yeah. it. Um, but uh, he's helped me a lot. Uh, he's a designer in East LA and uh, he's an incredible designer and he had to, you know, he was the same way with me. He had a, the same exact vision and the same exact wants uh, because we've both been working in the industry and um, it's something that we both see that needs to like change, you know? Absolutely. I can't wait for this project. You know that uh, <laughs> you have my support too in whatever way that I can help, honestly. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah.